welcome to Creating Art with Jenny. Today I'm going to share with you how I create dramatic skies or clouds and just a tiny bit of background. So I'm, tiny, I'm using a um, landscape picture. It's not going to be super large um, just so that it will go fairly quickly. Um, I do love to paint on large um, size watercolor with the clouds. It's just so much fun. But um, smaller ones for demonstration purposes. So I am actually using a 20 inch, uh, 20, uh, number 20 Da Vinci, um, it's called a Cosmo Top, and it's a great way just to put down water quickly. And I'm also using a 300 pound Arches weight. So um, that just is, um, it's very easy to use just because it gives you a lot of flexibility to go back in and work before your paint dries. Um, I am going to be using a um, indigo blue and then a little bit of gray and then we'll talk about the landscape when we get there. So starting from the top, it's going to be kind of a stormy night. So I'm going to start with my indigo blue and I'm coming in and I'm kind of thinking about what is it I'm looking for and what do I want to create. And so it's going to be super dark over here. And then I want to open it up to some clouds. And I know it doesn't look great yet. Just give me a second. And as I come in and work with this, I'm really thinking about how do I add some clouds in here. And I'm trying to make my dark up at the top. And maybe even leaving some clouds over here and coming through. So... Now that I've kind of got my paint down, I'm going to come in and add a little bit more dark over here because I said I wanted this to be a little bit darker. And then I'm going to put some water on my brush and I need to come in and smooth out some of these edges because we know my clouds don't really look like that. So anything that doesn't look natural I'm coming in and working on and as you can see because this is such good watercolor paper it does it's um, really forgiving and so I'm coming in and trying to kind of create some of this I might even close some of this up but I'm working fast too because I it does I mean even though it's forgiving it will dry quickly so Coming in and, you know, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way down to the bottom. And I'll probably pick some of this back up. And so as I think about my clouds, I'm kind of like, okay, that's that's not bad. I'm not unhappy. And I'm trying to look at, do I see anything that I don't really like? And right here, I don't really like what I did right there. So I'm going to come in and add some darker color to kind of bring it down. And even over here, I did want this to be darker over here. So I'm going to come drop some more indigo blue right in here over the horizon. So... Now I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to add a little bit of um, my um, Payne's Gray. And, you know, they always have a darkness. They're heavier down at the bottom of your white clouds. So, kind of drop some of this Payne's Gray in there to create... That heaviness that we need to create a reality. And it's okay even in the blue to come in and drop some of that dark. I'm trying to stay mostly on the bottom of my clouds. So as you can see I have um, Part of this is coming down, which is fine, but I do want to kind of pick some of that up. I don't really want it all the way down there, and it is kind of going down a little, but that's all right. I'm going to grab a 
Viva paper towel, like I said, that's always one of my favorites. And it also is really good for picking up um, soap. Like I said, I'm not a commercial, but it actually is really absorbent for um, picking up things. So it is my go-to towel. That's what my art teacher, um, Worrell, was always like, only towel you can use. <laughs> it's like for um, paper, for watercolor. I'm like, all right, well. So now I don't want to leave this stark white because the clouds are not going to be super white. So I'm going to drop in a little bit with my paintbrush, try to drop in some of that gray just to create some reality. All right, so as I look at that, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pause here, let it dry, and I'll be right back. All right, so it's dried for a few minutes, and I am ready to go in and add some mountains. And I'm still using my indigo blue, maybe just a little lighter version. And as I come in, I'm just going to create down here in my lower part, just some very faint mountains. Because it's, you know, it's dark, it's cloudy, it's stormy. And this is what's going on in the background. This, these are kind of fun things to paint. Make some of these a little bit thicker than others. Maybe make this come up a little bit. All right, so now that I have my horizon line, I'm going to come in, kind of add. So you always kind of, uh, when you're painting, you always want soft lines, hard lines, um, just to create um, illusion of what's going on. All right, so there we go. And then I'm not done because I want to create a um, foreground. So I'm going to bring in some of my um, yellow ochre, bring it in down here. And the fun thing with this is that when you bring that in, and you can also bring in some greens. And hopefully, let's see if we can't get some blush going on through here. Let me see. Find my little sap green. That might have been too bright, so I'm going to go back to Paraline and kind of drop that in there. And it doesn't have to go across the whole page, but some. And, and that's kind of a fun thing to do is when you are painting wet on wet is just to see some of the things that you can create um, that are, look like natural shrubs when they come in. So here we go. And remember, when you are painting and your sky is such a big part of what you're doing, you always want to make sure that you come in and drop some more blue in there because what's reflected in the um, on the ground is from the sky and it has a huge impact on photography and everything else that, that um, you take. So drop some of that blue in there. And I'm really liking how that's um, working and I'm just going to let it be because sometimes you can just overwork stuff. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take care of this a little bit. I don't want that white. So come in. But everything else, it's okay that I'm just going to let that be right there. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be back one more time. Time to go put my chicken on the spit. And by the time I do that, it should be dried. All right, welcome back. So there are chickens on the grill, on the spit. It's rotisserieing for about a, an hour. And I am ready to complete my painting. So as I look at it, I'm happy with um, so far how it looks. And I need to kind of go in. And I, wanna def I want to define some of these just a little bit, just to create a little bit more interest in my painting 
and to bring it kind of up home and close because it's not just um, a far away thing and so I'm just kind of creating um, bringing some darker sh shadows and values in just making them kind of small like the shrubberies and I'm also going to come in and use a little bit of gray because we've got this the storm is still raging over there and just to create some kind of landscape so that it looks more realistic so I like to just use a kind of a dry brush and I'm going to bring in some raw umber and that's kind of new into what's been here but I feel like it will work in my landscape right here so just just a little bit I'm not trying to I'm not going to overwhelm my painting with items but you know we're kind of probably out in West Texas where I'm thinking we are and kind of where I grew up and it's very desolate rocky kind of cacti ish um, maybe some things off in the distance okay so I'm going to kind of leave that alone well, I said that and then I keep painting because I do like to do that but my main intention of this was to show you a um, the sky which I did and I just wanted to bring in a little bit of a foreground right here so as I do that when I take off you can see the light filtering in from my window that's so nice I'm going to go ahead and take off my blue tape which really does impact how your painting looks and I love to um, use blue tape just because it gives you such a nice already like matte that you don't have to redo let me take away my ugly painting board and put it on my pretty one and so there you have it that's um that's my one of my dark gloomy skies and it was on 300 pound arches um watercolor paper and i usually buy um, my arches watercolor paper um, sometimes I buy it from Michaels if I can you can they have those 50% sales like buy one get one 50% which is actually a really good deal but then I also buy huge sheets that I will uh, partition up so I hope you enjoyed this next time I do one I'll show you how to bring in the sunlight which is a little bit more tricky and I haven't quite mastered but I feel like it's um, fairly good so um, thank you for joining me today and I hope you Go paint your own skies. Just remember, try to use good quality watercolor paper so you have time for it to forgive you before it just sets in and creates those lines. All right, you guys have a good day, and I shall talk to you later. Bye.